Wolverines are out, set to kick it off to Northwestern. And we're a little bit late to kick off this afternoon for a good reason, as far as the Michigan fans are concerned, because uh, moments ago, they paraded the Stanley Cup around the big house. And gauging the reaction to the entry of the Stanley Cup compared to the entry of the Wolverines, I think I might give the Cup a decibel or two advantage. At least one decibel, Dave. At least one. I, that, that was a goosebump sort of experience. And here they need seven. Hughes away from the pressure and on target for Musso. First and goal, Wildcats. At the eighth, they get 17 yards on the scramble by Hughes. And a perfect lead pass for Brian Musso. So the Wildcats spurred on early by three penalties against Michigan, now doing it on their own. Autry trying to pick his way near the five on first and goal. And he's met there by Copenhaver and Sword on the third down. Here's second and goal from the six. Motion from Hartle, two tight ends. Autry the lone back. And cannot get the corner turn with a marker down. Keeps the second effort alive, though, and is near the goal line. He might have had the face mask grab, but continued on from the 10 where the first contact came. It's going to be holding against Northwestern. Number 32. All right, they'll hit a hold of Clint Copenhaver. And now second and goal occurs from the 17-yard line of Michigan. Hughes again, Chase Steele has him, won't let him go. Third sack of the year for Glenn Steele. And Josh Williams right there. Third and goal from the 26. And Hughes again, buried by Williams. He's got back-to-back -back sacks. This time there was a blocker for Josh Williams, but he whipped him immediately. It was Paul Janis, the number 74, the best offensive lineman that Northwestern has. You'll see him come from the quarterback's left as he defeats his blocker. Shows excellent balance to come down with the quarterback. Coaches can hardly bear to see those kinds of mistakes by an offensive unit. And this turns into a 52-yard effort by Brian Goins, and it is good! And you see why Brian Goins leads the nation. By four yards, it is his longest this year. 13 of 17 to lead the nation from 52 yards. The Wildcats lead it 3 nothing. There's Frazier who gets a battlefield promotion today. Adamy has been a guard most of his career, a center most of this year. Greasy keeps his balance and is near the first down at the 40-yard line. Northwestern's defense. Well, Michigan's been at home almost the entire season, so it is a, a little bit pockmarked down there. Tillman wide open. Wrestled down inside the 35 by Nelson, 23 yards. As we said in the opener against Colorado, five catches for 126 yards. This is just his fourth catch since that game. Yeah, here comes the big tight end, Jeremy Tooman. And Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, told us in our meetings yesterday, we're going to have to get him back in the offense. The question was asked, what about the tight end? Where has he been? He said, we've got to get the ball to the big guy. Williams now in motion. And nobody left in the backfield behind Greasy. Over the middle for Tillman. A nice job keeping his balance. And they'll mark him down at the 28, where it'll be third and three. This season for Baker is best so far. A 40-yarder, and they run a fake. And stop at the 30-yard line is Chris Howard. So Northwestern doesn't bite, and they force the change of possession. That's holding a, on against the fake field goal. Wonderful play by Gerald Conaway, number 11 for Northwestern. When did I get old? Like that? I like that better. Hughes off the play fake as Hartle. And Hartle run down from behind by Dahani Jones after a gain of 10. Update on the Big 10 combined record coming in 29 and 3. 
A great year for this conference, Bruin. Adrian Autry is run down, drawing the near side at the 35, and Josh Williams has had a tremendous first quarter with two sacks and this tackle of Autry. Four unbeatens among the top 11, five of the top 16 in the country. Michigan number six coming in. Hughes buried again at the 23. Woodson coming on a corner blitz, and Jones right there with him. Keep them playing hard. They've played extremely well thus far. Offensively, they kept it almost 11 minutes in the first quarter. This is a third and three. And Greasy for Tooman. Jeremy Tooman is inside the 10. First and goal. He beat Anwan Jones on the coverage and goes 38 yards. So many times you hope that you can isolate your tight end and get the ball to him and you have the best of intentions, but you don't get it done. Very early in this game, Brian Greasy and his offensive cohorts have gotten the job done. This is a beautiful throw and catch. Excellent job by Tooman to beat Anwan Jones and get the ball inside the 10. Barnett thought maybe a push off by Tooman. Howard right through the middle and stopped at the lip of the goal line, maybe two feet shy by Bobby Russ. When they've been behind, they have come back with a vengeance. 18 of 19 scoring in the red zone. Howard rolled off one hit and finally is rolled down back at the four-yard line. We'll see how much progress they get in Nelson and Buck finishing off Howard. They gave him the two where it's third and goal. Greasy, incomplete. Intended for Ty Streets. One-on-one -on -one with Gerald Conaway, and if it's thrown a little higher, Streets might be able to make that catch. We'll look for a fake here from 19 yards out. Good snap and hold, and Baker is on target. We're tied. 3-3. 13.25 to go, first half in Ann Arbor. Well, we've seen both defenses stiffen, and a 52-yard field goal by Brian Goins matched by Craig Baker's 19-yarder, 3-3, Jay Feely. Aaron Burrell will return this one. And it pops loose, recovered at the 37-yard line by the Wolverines. Dwayne Patman knocking it loose for Michigan. You can see this coming. Aaron Durrell, this ball is being carried like a loaf of bread. It's out away from his body, and the first blow he takes, that ball pops out. And the guy that kicked it, same guy that recovered it, Feely. You must secure the football as if it were riveted to your chest. Major break for Michigan. From the 36, Greasy has Russell Shaw. Floyd is the only back. And Chris Floyd, Greasy says, is our MVP. No questions asked. Rambling for a first down. First and 10. Howard with the call, and look at the room he has up the middle. Inside the 15 before Tor Schmidt, number 90, brings him down. So on again for a short field goal effort, Craig Baker. Who hit from 19 early, this will be 23 yards. That last play was the first really big play for Northwestern. Baker is two for two, but that's really two victories for the Northwestern defense. Two victories, particularly when you cough it up inside your 30-yard line and hold a powerful team like Michigan to a field goal. And as a result, the Michigan offense has yet to really establish anything consistently all day. There's a nice finger to kick grab by Williams. He goes head-to-head -head with Gerald Conaway and powers forward and should have the first down across the 30-yard line. Williams, their second leading receiver coming in. Right behind Howard, and then he backs up. Williams called on one more time and driven out by Nelson right at the 40. 
Cooper, number six, Michigan, up by three. Late first half, Greasy with all day. Over the middle, there's Woodson. And Charles Woodson finally guided out of bounds by Fred Wilkerson at the 36-yard line. So Greasy has Thomas wide right now out of the backfield. And guns it for him at the 30. Might have another first near the 25 where he's hit by Conrad Emmerich. And it's Cass Tech High School where he's a teammate of Clarence Williams at the Wolverines. On third and eight. Greasy complete near the 10-yard line. The catch made by Shaw. First down on a 12-yard connection to the senior from L.A. Third and nine over the middle, and this one is caught by Tuman, and it is a touchdown. But that is a touchdown right there. The tight end's job on this play is to find the seam in the middle of the zone and to hook up. That's a great throw and catch. I'm telling you. How, great look throw at this and catch. Four white jerseys that Greasy had to thread that one through. How'd he do it? A very small window. He did it with years and years of diligent practice. <laughs> There's no other way to do that. Coach Carr likes that. So on fourth and one, Brian Goins, who had a career-best 52-yarder in the first half for the only Northwestern points, on to try a 42-yarder. Out of the hole to Chris Handorf. Plenty of leg on this one, but off the upright and through. It's good. Brian deserved that day because last week he kicked one into the upright. It bounced straight back, did not go through. It eventually cost him the game, or you could you could argue that it cost him the game. So Brian would say, I had one coming. Well, consider him repaid in full. 52 and a 42-yarder for Brian. 13 to 6, Michigan. So he coolly knocked it through again, and Cats had their second straight win over the Wolverines. Clarence Williams swinging out of the backfield, and that's good for a first down to the 44-yard line, knocked out by Gardner. Quarter. And from a 16 to nothing lead, the Wolverines lost at 17-16. This will help, though. Stretching grab, tie streets. He knows what he's doing and is respected. Deep drop, and just as he's hit, he finds Williams again, and Clarence is inside the 15. Russell Shaw with a nice clearing block, and it's good for 16 yards. We'll have to see. Second down. Powers. Tried to cut it back. And is turned away by Gardner with unofficially his 10th tackle of the day at the 8th. Gardner now has 10 tackles in this game. Needs to make a big one here. Recent chase by DuBose. Will keep. First and goal at the 3. As you get second and goal from the 2.5. Greasy play fake is almost sacked. Somehow gets away and wide open in the middle of the end zone for his second touchdown is Jeremy Tuman. Greasy slipping away from Nelson to find Tuman and maybe putting this thing away for Michigan. Now a couple of looks at the escape from Nelson by Greasy. Football practice is a process of learning to keep your balance and do the things that you have to do if you're a defensive player tackling is the most critical. Nelson comes in does not keep his feet under him does not keep a grasp of that jersey and jerseys are made such that they don't tear away you can bring down anybody if you've got a strong enough grip and he certainly had greasy in the grass. So now the Cats have got to think throw, and Woodson knows that, and he's got the pick. Even with the poor throw and the poor decision, it's still a phenomenal play by Charles Woodson, and you understand how he developed the reputation that he has.
Williams. Stiff arm after a terrific change of direction. And out of the 22, what's happening with Michigan State? Flash in East Lansing. Anthony Thomas has the first down, almost first and goal. Out of the 11, hit there by Gardner. And a cheerleader. Thomas trying the right side. And a head of steam inside the five where he's knocked down. And he had big Demetrius Smith, a 270-pound freshman, who lined up wide right. Greg Baker on to try 26-yarder. Out of Greasy's hold for a 17-point lead. 7.28 to go as Michigan heads to a 5-0 start. Adrian Autry held fairly well in check today. Autry's 15th carry for just 35 yards. He has gone over 103 times already this year and can't bring in that fastball. He does for the rest of the team. He raises the level of performance of the rest of the Wolverine. Tight end Joel Stewart. Second leading receiver for the Cats at the 22 where he's hit by. The other way. On fourth and one. Hughes will be close. I don't think he gets the first down. They've got a lot of young players on the field, and they still close on the ball like they were Rockets. And Michigan has held again. Twenty-three six is the final for still unbeaten five and zero Michigan.